So with so many people stuck at home, I thought it would be fun to go on a backyard expedition and see how many different species I could find in my backyard in a couple of hours, hopefully inspiring you to go outside after watching this video and go enjoy the outdoors for a couple of hours and see what you can find. Okay, let's go outside and go on a backyard expedition. Okay, so we have a stump here. I'm gonna flip it and see what is under. Oh wow, it's kind of cool. We got um, we got some termites, but we also have two little tiny ants swarming under here. These ants feasting on the termites belong to the genus Hypoponera, rare subterranean ants that rarely see the light of day. Yeah, they're going off of like termite brood. So here we have a familiar face. We have Pogonomimrix barbatus, so the rough harvester ant, and they are currently collecting seeds. And they have a full trail going off in that direction, you can kind of see. Below the surface, these harvester ants have what is best described as a catacomb of chambers, going down well over two meters below the surface. There are some absolutely massive bees up here. They're like these huge bumblebees. They're hovering in the heights upon these uh, flowers, pollinating them. Okay. Take a look, there's a, oh my gosh, an Ishan Newman wasp just landed on my <laughs> wrist. It's kind of scary. Okay, there's like an anthill on this, so this is going to be kind of an exciting thing to open up. Oh, wow. So there is an entire colony of ants under here. I don't think these ants sting. They do spray formic acid, though, for sure. Okay, I'm going to... Put this rock back. Okay, let's check this rock. What's uh, under this rock? There's a spider, There's some beetles. Oh wow, look at the amount of springtails on here. They're these really cool uh, zebra striped springtails. I hear that sound. That is a uh, pinion jay. Okay, so yeah, always. Oh, and put the rock back where it was. Not this one. Oh, that's nice. We got a whole colony of termites under here. We got some cool beetles. Got a lot more isopods. We got a spider with an egg sac. Around the garden live a variety of winged insects. Parasitoid wasps dig holes in the soil, which they will eventually stock with paralyzed caterpillars for their young to feed on. The adults feed on the nectar of flowers and can be seen in aggregations on certain species of native plants. Okay, we have a damselfly right here, beautiful vivid blue on it. Them and dragonflies have these huge eyes. They're very visual predators. And their eyes are compound, which means they're made up of multiple little lenses. And I know in sort of popular culture that's sort of portrayed as uh, like many images of the same thing, but it's more like how this camera is collecting information, where each pixel is collecting part of an image, and then it's all being combined. On flowers, many species, ranging from beetles to butterflies, come to pollinate, coming to feed off sugary nectar but help the plants reproduce by transferring pollen from plant to plant. Fast-moving carabid beetles run down prey on the ground. Perched on rocks, plants, and buildings are the strange Raphidioptera, predatory insects commonly known as snake flies that have changed little since the Jurassic period. Reptiles are quite common in this garden, whether snakes like this striped whip snake or lizards like this plateau fence lizard. So they're a really cool lizard. They have kind of these really spiny scales. But what you can't see is underneath they have this brilliant blue belly. But from my angle, I can just barely see the blue. It's a very beautiful lizard. So I've caught the fence lizard. Um, 
They're very beautiful lizards. They have these really cool sort of fringed out scales. Hopefully you can hear me over the wind. You know, they're a fairly common lizard here and it's like, oh, you always see them. But then you see the belly and you see this beautiful deep blue color and it's absolutely stunning. I always forget how beautiful these lizards actually are until you catch one and look at the belly and it's like, wow, look at that. That's a beautiful deep blue. You can make some such cool lizards. Okay, let's uh, set the fence lizard loose. So I am literally surrounded by hummingbirds right now. Hummingbirds are the smallest birds in the world and are highly derived and specialized. Other garden birds, though, are more reminiscent of their theropod ancestors, like this wild turkey. Among my favorite scaled friends here are the whiptails. Fast moving and quite clever, they are very hard to catch. Well, I caught one. These are very hard to catch. This is a tiger whiptail. And whiptails are really cool. They're related to uh, tegus of South America. What's really interesting about this particular whiptail is it's bisexual, which is kind of a departure from some of the species found here in the Southwest. There are several lineages of whiptails in the Southwest that are parthenogenic, which means they basically just clone themselves. And so the entire population is female. So the problem with being parthenogenic is that the entire population is basically a clone, so if the environment changes and the traits that that particular parthenogenic uh, lineage has are not advantageous, they can go extinct. But they're very successful when things are kind of stable and they can just clone themselves. So these are the lineages that partake in regular sexual reproduction. So that allows them to have a wide range of traits which allows them to evolve when things change. And I'm sure that these populations have kind of gone parthenogenic over time again and again and again. Beautiful patterning, that's why it is called the tiger whiptail, gorgeous lizard. I think I've been heckling this lizard enough and it's ready to go. So I'm just going to let it go and it runs off. I always love when they do this little movement when they settle to bask. It's just so cute. Oh, thank you for checking this video out. Now turn off your screen and go head outside for a couple of hours and enjoy the natural light. After that, come back here and leave a comment saying what you found. I am really excited to hear what you find out on your own backyard expeditions. After your adventure, if you are interested, I have a couple videos here of different animals you may have seen in your backyard. And if you want to learn more, here they are. Go check them out. Thank you for watching.